Greetings, welcome back to Astro Gaster. Not you again. Yeah. Good day, sir, and well met. Oh, pray tell, did you secure the hand of the golden haired maiden? Yeah, verily I did. Thank goodness. My conversion to Puritanism did work wondrous well to win her favor. Ah, then my advice was sound. Aye, after I told her that I thought the queen dresses like a strumpet, the Pope is the demon son of Satan, what? and that Will Shakespeare and his players should be driven into the Thames to drown. She became convinced of the purity of my soul. Okay. I was made the happiest of men. Then I must congratulate you on your forthcoming nuptials. Uh, will you be having a summer wedding or...? Congratulate me? What? Do not congratulate me, Foreman, for I am the unhappiest of men. Not again. It was but the day after our engagement was announced that my love became afflicted with the smallpox. Oh. Naturally, I was all a terror. Would she perish? So wretched was I with fear, I almost died of fright. Aye, naturally. Uh, smallpox is a most terrible disease. I intend to write a small treatise on the subject. But then, alas, fate struck the cruelest of blows upon my soul. Oh, verily. Oh, poor girl. May she rest in peace. Or re-squeeze in patchy, as we Latin scholars say. What? Nay, death would have been a mercy. For once cured, the maid arose from her sickbed bearing hideous scars. Seriously. Her fair cheeks thus so cratered to make the very moon wane with envy. I see. And now you wish to extract yourself from your engagement, I presume. Naturally. But her brother and father are fearsome men with a taste for rough sports. And her mother's tongue is as sharp as a barber's blade. I worry that my breach of promise may be taken ill. Then let me see if probably I may will. The family's reaction from the stars. What will become of breaking your oh. engagement to this once fair, now pox scarred maid? There won't be anything good about that. Okay. Moore has cause for hope regarding the young lady's forgiveness. The maiden will bear the dissolution of her engagement with quiet grace. The maiden's father is being careless with his legacy. Indeed, it was most careless of him to befraud his daughter to such a mump headed snatch grabber. That sounds like it. God's punishment is on the way, with Neptune and Mars bringing confusion and war. It would be intelligent to seek resolution in a foreign country. Moore's breach of promise may result in a sudden change of fortune, his death. Yeah, I think it's this one. Good tidings. While the family may well take your decision ill, good angels guide them toward restraint and discipline in their actions. The maid herself will endure it with quiet forbearance. Quiet forbearance? By the saints, what a wondrous creature is she! Verily, I am disappointed that I must break off with her, for truly there is no mountain I would not climb. No trial I would not endure to wed a maid of so sweet a disposition. But I must be brave and go at once to break the news. Mm, just do it delicately. Okay, only ten. God damn it. Wait, I was a little pleased. Yeah, he's always a little pleased. You knew. Oh. 
That's a nice introduction you've got there. Ho! Ho there! Be there anyone at home? Is it? By the saints! Uh, tis none other than Archbishop John Whitgift. Uh, your grace. I am most honoured by this most unexpected visit. Truly, tis most unexpected as I just so happened to be passing by. Indeed, I was riding by in my carriage when I found myself struck ill. My chap so suggested I take rest at the nearest residence, which okay. did so happen to be this small dwelling. <laughs> Forsooth, these rooms have the look of a of a physician's consulting chamber. No, chambers. it is not. Don't let that fool you. <laughs> Be to God for this happy coincidence. Just a most fortunate get, coincidence indeed. Get I out of here, a please. A doctor of astrology and physic. At your service, your grace. Well then, doctor, um, uh, uh, Dr. Foreman, was it? Uh, perchance you will tell me what ails me. I, I feel a kind of pain and heaviness in my side, and okay. I know not if this be related, but my skin has of late become most unattractive in appearance. Pain in the right side of the body and sallowness of the skin. Her Majesty did remark upon it most wittily the other day at a meeting of the Privy Council. Your face does serve as a warning to us all, Archbishop. Her Majesty the Queen, verily. Uh, a moment, if I may, Your Grace, while I consult the stars. What does cause the suffering of His Grace, the most reverend John Whitgift, the Archbishop of Canterbury. I don't know. Can't have the slightest idea. The Archbishop is suffering from the Drone Dice, a condition characterized by trollers sitting into the skin when the tube connecting the gallbladder to the liver is blocked. The Archbishop is suffering from a cardiac passion, characterized by curious pain in the heart and gnawing sensation throughout the body. Yeah, and your face is, well, it's just your face. From a cardiac passion, Your Grace. Uh, tis a painful condition of the heart, oft occasioned by large moods. That is, an excess of joy or anger. Overmuch or over little food and drink can also provoke it. Pain in my heart? Perhaps your stars know something of my complaint that I do not. Worry not, sir, for the stars suggest it can be cured. I will give you a concoction of thin wine mixed with syrup of violets. It will cool and strengthen your heart. And before it doesn't really sound as if it were my manservant let blood from your cardiac vein. Especially that. <laughs> Allow me to adjust the sleeve of your robes. Nay, Sarah, I have not the time to tarry. Oh. Uh, pray, give me that flask of wine you spoke of, and I shall be on my way. Before you depart, Your Grace, uh, perchance I might travel you with a uh, request of my own. Good day, sir. My chaplain will settle payment with you anon. I hope you die. The current took my advice further ill. Mm. On my word, who was that man I passed on the way out? Might that have been the manservant? Really? Why everyone speaks of my manservant? Oh. Indeed, methinks I have not seen your lordship since since last year, afore you set off with Sir Walter Raleigh to capture those Spanish treasure ships. Ah, oh, yes. Doubtless you heard what became of that expedition. Yep. The town criers called it Raleigh and Essex's gold piracy fail, declaring it the biggest balls up since the English Armada. Sorry. It was most ill-mannered of them, if I may remark. The directions you gave me were entirely wrong, for we never came across the Spanish fleet. Indeed, we found ourselves becalmed in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. That's your fault. Charlie blames me for it, and although I did explain to him that it was entirely your fault, as I had gotten the navigational coordinates from you, that seemed to bother him even more. My lord, I am full sorry for any error I may have made in my calculations. Uh, forsooth, I pray I may assist you better this day. What is it you would ask of the stars? 
I would have you tell me how I might regain the favour of the Queen. Okay. Indeed, it is strange she has not yet gotten over her displeasure, for the incident did occur many months ago. And we had every intention of returning her warships, filled to the brim with gold, I might add. Besides, how in the devil's name were we supposed to know the King of Spain would choose that very same month to invade England? I don't know. Well, I have not the power to predict the future. Uh, well, nay, but I have, my lord. If you had asked me no, to do it is not to be borne. Only last week at a meeting of the Privy Council during a minor disagreement regarding the Catholic rebellion in Ireland, she called me an impudent lordsplainer, whereupon she rose from her chair and molly whopped me in the face. <coughs> I half drew my sword upon her. <gasps> you mean the Queen? Aye, indeed. Her behaviour was most shocking. I even asked the royal physician whether she may have lost her mind. Really? She is, after all, most elderly. But Mr. Smith assures me she is in very fine health and is in full control of her faculties. Her Majesty's behaviour is a mystery indeed, although mayhap it should not surprise us. A man's reason is oft insufficient to fathom the workings of the feminine mind and, in such cases, he may have little choice but to call upon divine wisdom. To wit, let us see what the stars can tell us. No. What must no, 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 no. Okay, let's see. What can he do? Devil Rue may reverse his change in fortune by turning his working relationship with the queen to sex one. <laughs> Devil Rue's ambition may be achieved if he is gentle. Devil Rue should pretend to be in love with queen. Devil Rue should assume a position of authority in keeping with his birthright as peer of the realm. Devil Rue should not act in haste. He should make an intelligent suggestion to mount a military campaign in a foreign country. The Rue must show the Queen he is loyal man and does his duty. Yep. To regain the Queen's favour, you must demonstrate your fealty to her. Your loyalty as a peer of the realm who sits on her privy council. To this end, the stars suggest you offer to lead a military campaign to put down this Catholic rebellion in Ireland. Your Lordship is, after all, a great military leader. What better man for such a task than the hero of Cadiz? <laughs> Tis no ill idea. Tis no ill idea at all. Okay. Yes, indeed. I shall offer to put down the Irish for her. For good, so, good. How difficult could such a mission be? Oh. I shall quickly defeat those fence-sucking muck savages and be back home by Christmas. Huzzah! Huzzah! Godspeed, my lord. Letter, please. Again, so close. And to be honest, this <laughs> counting. The letter of recommendation looks pretty strange. Okay. Good day, Mistress Payne. How may I help you this day? Blessed day, Dr. Foreman. I am just come from taking my niece to visit Rochester Cathedral. Thomas Blogg is the cathedral's dean, I believe. Know you of Dean Blogg? Aye, I know something of him. Verily, that man is a model to us all. Under his stewardship, the cathedral's decorative furnishings have been stripped away. He has even replaced the silver candlesticks with pewter. Such pious modesty in the sight of God. Has he indeed? How very interesting. Yeah, I think he and just the sold the silver. Uh, what is it that brings you this day? Before I begin upon my business, Dr. Foreman, I must insist you acknowledge your failings. You oh. were most wrong to frighten me with these notions of England being invaded by the Spanish. But they were! That, though to be fair, I do not think anybody could have predicted the storm that sank the Spanish ships. Yeah. It was most unexpected. And we must give thanks to God for the <sighs> divine yeah. vengeance he wrought upon the heretics. I did hear that by morning our beaches were verily littered with the corpses of Spanish sailors. Praise be to the Lord, his glory to be Seriously. Lord. Seriously. Uh, yes, praise be. But all the same, you seem anxious this day, Mistress Payne. What is troubling you? Indeed, I am troubled, Dr. Foreman. I fear for the Queen's health 
Everyone is saying that as she is exceeding old, she is soon to die. Oh, she I won't. I understand your feelings, madam. How we love our good Queen Bessie. Long may she reign. Uh, but will she? That is the question, is it not? She, she will. Forever and when at last she does expire, we shall be stricken with such lamentation and grief. Mayhap you, but not I. What? Elizabeth Tudor is naught but a septed whore, but still a whore who presides over the Church of England and keeps Rome at bay. And without an heir, who knows what manner of foreigner may succeed her when she dies? For all we know, he may flood the land with foul popery. Uh, foul popery? I think <laughs> you do not care for dried floral arrangements. Uh, but, madam, surely fresh flowers are more customary at royal funerals. Did you not heed me, Mr. Foreman? No. I wish to know whether the English throne is safe from a Catholic successor. Ah, yes, of course. It I is. Let us consult the stars. Is our Queen's long reign in danger of ending soon? And if so, do we risk a Catholic succeeding her to the throne? Maybe the first, but not the latter. The Queen is in love. An unexpected pregnancy will bring new life to the Tudor royal line. She is too old to bear a child. The Queen's legacy is safe. Even if she dies, her successor will remain head of the Church of England and loyal to the Anglican faith. Bonds between nations will be creatively disrupted with violence and austerity will be imposed as a result. Cooperation offered by a foreign country is not what it seems. This doubtless represents England's ally, King's, King James of Scotland. I'll go with this one. The Queen's prognosis is good, madam. God will ensure she remains in health for some years yet. And when at last Her Majesty does expire, Whomever succeeds her will happily take his place at the head of the Church of England. I may assure you that England will not revert its allegiance to the Church of Rome. Taunt, oh, right? Please be! To know that England shall remain safe from Satan's earthly servants is well indeed. Fare you well and may God give you a blessed day, Dr. Foreman. I really do not understand that they argue over very simple, simple, uh, similar religions. Oh no no! Oh! I guess I should have told him to run to the other country. Good day, Mr. Moore. How fare you this fine Tuesday? Uh, oh, on my word, you do not look well. Your face is very pale, and I detect a foul odour. It is true, I fare not well. But there is no reason to be rude about it, Foreman. Sir, I was merely expressing my concern. You appear stricken with fever, and, methinks, an infected wound. I, I shall undo my breeches for you. Yeah. There, do you see? My, my, I do see. Tis a knife wound by the look of it. The barber surgeon did stitch it up, but now it does ooze this noisome green stuff all yeah. over my fine linens. So, I came to you. And you were very right to do so. You're I, gonna I die. Was, because I think it only fair that you fix it. After all, this is all your fault, Foreman. My fault? Uh, sir, I do not follow. You told me I had nothing to fear from that wretched maiden's family when I from broke off her engagement. But you were wrong. Uh, then I am most sorry for it. I gather the family did not take the news philosophically. Verily, they did not. The maid herself wept, as is to oh, be expected. Okay. But the father took it most violently. He called me an oath-breaking chudlord. Whereupon he laid hands upon me and threw me out onto the street. Indeed. But was not the end of it. For some weeks later, I was set upon by the maid's brother and his band of knaves. They left me for dead behind an alehouse. If I had not been discovered by the night watch, I might have died. Damn. <sighs> Sorry, business indeed. What a shame you didn't I die. Have servant, William, clean your wound and apply a balm to it. But... Pray tell me more of your fever. How oft does it come? Well, I did not have this fever yesterday. 
and I was well enough to go to church on Sunday. Oh, and to the theatre the day before. But Friday last, I was stricken up. Do you have malaria? Fever this day and Friday last. Hmm. Now, mayhap, we consult the stars. What kind of fever has Lancelot more? Mario happens every other day or so. More is troubled with the quotation fever. It is caused by putrefied phlegm and occurs every day. That's not it. Moore suffers from the carton fever. It caused by putrid bile and occurs every fourth day. Oh my god. But what's day is today? He said it was on Friday, but it was fine on Sunday and now today. Most terrian fever is caused by putrid color and occurs every third day. What day is today? Is it Monday? Tuesday. It's Friday. You're troubled with the quartan fever. I, I think so. It comes every fourth day. It's caused by rotting bile. You must abstain from eating pork and any other meats that slow the digestion. And you must not bathe, but have a servant Ew. rub your back very vigorously every day until the fever abates. Then what is it that you're mixing for me there? It is true I am thirsty, but have you no wine you might offer me instead? No. It is an infusion of chamomile, mallow, mercury, and leaves of the black violet. Wait, mercury? Oh, William shall be administering it up the fundament. Oh. I'll lower your breeches, if you please. Hope it serves you well. Damn, that was nice. Oh, that's gonna be bad, I think. You are eating swans. Good day and well met, Lord Archbishop. What a pleasure it is to welcome your grace once more to my humble consulting chambers. Do you ail of something, sir? Nay, I am in good health. That's good. I am come for information. Uh, that is, I am come for an astrological reading concerning one of my deans. Okay. Thomas Blair, the dean of oh. Rochester Cathedral. I hear you are acquainted with him, are you not? Yeah. Yes, so please, Your Grace. I am honoured to say that Dean Blag is one of my querents. I see. What a remarkable coincidence. Uh, then you may know that Dean Blag has been petitioning me to promote him to the rank of bishop, specifically to grant him the vacant seat of the bishopric of Salisbury. I wonder if you, that is, if the stars and planets and so forth, might tell me if there be any reason why Thomas Blood might not be a fitting candidate for such a position of... Because he sells his silver? Then let us oh, see and not only his? Can tell us. Should Thomas Blood, Dean of Rochester, be made the Bishop of Salisbury? But you didn't tell me whether my concussion were... Oh, he's not done yet. <sighs> okay, he won't know that I did it, I think. Okay, let's take it out. The current John Whitgift is not an honorable man. Black is a frugal manager to charge funds. John Whitgift would be wise to cooperate with his employee Dean Black. Financial deceit is being committed against the church. Dean Black has creatively and successfully stolen from the church. Yeah, that's true. Dean Black is questioning his religious principles. Black's heresy would be a shocking blow for the arch Archbishop. Dean Black is on an, an emotional journey. No, it's this. It's definitely this one. You must not grant Thomas Black the bishopric of Salisbury, Your Grace, for it seems Dean Black has been embezzling from the church. He has been removing cathedral furnishings, fine paintings, tapestries, candlesticks, and the like, and selling them for his own enrichment. Or may have to pay off. Just the silver. Verily. Well, I do hear it remarked that the Rochester Cathedral has been looking a little Puritan of late. Mayhap I shall have my chaplain cast an eye over the cathedral accounts. 
Before you leave, Your Grace, uh, perchance I may broach a small matter of my own. Uh, methinks you have the power to grant medical licenses, do you not? It's too Although soon. I am an experienced physician. Uh, you may have heard of my work during the plague of 1592, for instance. I am not technically licensed to practice medicine. It has been causing some administrative troubles of late. I wonder if your grace might condescend to help me by... You would have me grant you a medical license, would you? Hmm. I suppose Please. that might be arranged. Leave it with me, and I will have my chaplain look into it. Okay. I thank you heartily, your grace. Your grace is most generous. Okay, he was little pleased. That's good. Hi. God give you good day, Mistress Blag. Pray tell, what brings you? I would know whether my lover, Owen Wood, is resolved to leave me something in his will. A small legacy, mayhap. A large one. <laughs> I do hope he intends to leave me something. Owen Wood? Uh, he is the Dean of Armagh, is he not? Or was not your interest directed toward the Bishop of London? <laughs> Aye, but your counsel for wooing him served me most ill. Oh. When the Bishop came to visit the Archbishop in Lambeth, I smiled and nodded and kept my knees together like you advised, but was all for naught. The Archbishop's wife thought I was taken ill and sent me to bed directly after dinner. Forsooth, I am sorry to hear it, though mayhap it was for the best. Now... Perchance we may proceed to this matter concerning Owen Wood. Uh, pray tell, why would you wish to know whether he has included you in his will? Is he gravely ill? Not presently, but methinks he will be soon, for he has gone to Ireland to join that peacocking mumphead, the Earl of Essex. I see. Oh. He has gone to fight in Robert Devereux's military campaign to put down the Catholic rebels in Ireland. But you are being a little harsh, are you not? It is true he has had some bad luck of late, but the Earl is a fine... Oh, a swole-headed failson is what his lordship is. It would not surprise me if he read his map upside down and marched his men into a bog to drown. Pray, let us do my reading, if you please. Okay. Certainly. If Owen Wood, the Dean of Armagh, were to die, would Alice Blagg inherit anything from his estate? Probably not. <sighs> Owen Wood has frittered away his fortune. Dean Wood's time in Ireland will be gentle. Good angels will, co will compel Owen Wood to be faithful to his wife. The romance between the Alice Black and Owen Wood is marred with conflict and deceit. Owen Wood is keeping a secret to be revealed upon his death. Owen Wood could not resist being a being charitable to his lover Alice, she is due to receive a legacy from Wood upon his death, much to be to the surprise and chagrin of Mistress Wood. No, I think it's more like that. Alas, I am sorry to. I don't know. I don't know the guy. Dean Wood has no plans to leave you anything in his will. His entire fortune will go to his wife and children. Verily, I must own it does surprise me. Really? Does it though? Uh, for in this chart, I see conflict and lies between you. And it does appear that he is to renounce his adulterous ways and become once again faithful to his wife. He is, after all, a man of God. He is to become faithful to his wife, you say? <gasps> How extraordinary. Well, you did put the right name in your chart, I trust. Owen Wood with two O's? Huh. Well, well. Wonders will never cease. I don't know, really, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I don't know the guy. Can't expect me. Well, you do expect me to do that. Okay, but that's gonna be it for today. Stay alive and see you soon.